It's Disruptive FM. It's Disruptive FM. Disruptive FM. Welcome to Disruptive FM, where business and culture collide. Sponsored by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider. With your host, Jeffrey Colon. Okay, here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's another episode of Disruptive FM, number 20, for the week ending Friday, the 21st of September, 2018. Welcome as we bring this episode to you live from New York City. I'm Jeffrey Colon. Your host and audio guide for the next quarter hour as we dive into the culture of business and check out what's happening in marketing, media, tech, and popular culture. Nobody leave the dance floor. Here are this week's trending topics. Warped reality. Every few years, a new technology that was on the fringe for decades pulls a Malcolm Gladwell. In other words, it hits the tipping point. One case in the world of tech is that of mixed reality or augmented reality. Many think it is still some little game played by only a few folks in the world of tech that will simply be relegated to the bin of gaming. But this is once again one of those predictions in which the naysayers may get it wrong. Remember the 1990s? 20 years ago, you had some big business executives saying the following. The Internet will never have any effect on business or commerce because the Internet won't even exist in a few years. Ahem. I wonder if that person is even employable who said that in the year 2018. Well, we here at DFM don't take such closed minded points of view. We strongly feel that augmented reality, along with artificial intelligence and the fluidity of the cloud, will have amazing repercussions for how we do business in the 21st century. So we turn to an expert and an early adopter in this space. Josh Hassan, founder and CEO of Look Mister. Josh has done tons of work in this space the past few years for several big brands, including two projects for me at Microsoft. Here's what Josh had to say about this new frontier. Uh, It's undoubtedly early days. Things are changing so rapidly right now. Things that we're able to do in AR and MR now that we couldn't do six months ago, right? So we can only uh, guess where we'll be six months from now, one year from now. The opportunities for brands, especially um, in the e-commerce space, are just massive for the uh, abilities to engage consumers, to give them the chance to interact with products on a 3D spectrum is going to be fascinating. I think that people who dismiss it are going to be regretful. And uh, if they don't get on the train now and start to invest and involve themselves, they're going to be behind the curve, especially when optics mature to the level that we all hope they will in terms of being able to view AR experiences through glasses and not have to do these through tablets and phones. It's going to take e-commerce life as we know it to a whole new level. That was Josh Hassan, CEO and founder of Look Mister, a shop that does all things in mixed reality on the importance of the technology, not only in the next few years, but right now here in the year 2018. Thanks again, Josh. Trending topics on DFM. The adults are not all right. Young people suck, right? They don't know anything and they are just a bunch of privileged snots. I'm sure you've read some article like this in the past few years. Maybe about millennials. Well, Generation X back in the 90s, we were called slackers. And how about this? In the first century AD, Seneca the Elder wrote, quote, Our young men have grown slothful, their talents are left idle, and there is not a single honorable occupation for which they toil night and day. Scholars of European, African, Chinese, and Japanese history all have examples of youth hating. Pick a time, pick a place, and you'll find it. Renaissance writers complained of rowdy youth who'd sing bawdy songs in inappropriate social settings. In pre-colonial Africa, a youth wasn't considered a full-fledged person until they'd gone through an initiation. And even then, they were not fully respected until they became a parent. One of the reasons Mao Zedong launched the Cultural Revolution was that 
He feared the younger generation, lacking the experience of the older generation of revolutionaries, and that they might be too soft. But we here at DFM are here to tell you that the kids are all right. And the adults can be okay, too, if they just admit that we hate on youth because it's a way to preserve our place in time. What we're really fighting is decay, the feeling of fear. The worst feeling in the world is one of obsolescence. And yet by ragging on the new generation, you're basically writing yourself a one-way ticket out of town. The next generation is fine, capable, better even. Some of its members will slouch off for sure but others will step up and carry the world forward. Look around. Everything we know, everything we have relied upon or been impressed by or adored or treasured or desired was created by a generation who had been dismissed by the one before it. If we worsened over generations rather than improved, we'd have nothing. We'd be banging our heads against the ruins of the pyramids. Instead, we built the modern world. Our lives today are incontrovertible evidence that the untold billions of grumps that came before them were wrong. All of them, every time, without exception, period. Trending topics on DFM. Internet points. Why in the heck do we rag on those we fail to understand? All with the hope of scoring likes, hearts, retweets, shares, and comments. Last week, video on a New Jersey transit train caught a man shaving on that train. Yes, literally shaving. Of course, the video went viral and people piled on. This is what makes people feel good in our modern day and age. We hate our lives so much, we simply have to hunt for others to rag on to feel better. What we used to gain from watching reality television and its incredulous characters has pivoted to social media. But then something happened. The man in the video, Anthony Torres, came out and said he was homeless and that his life was all screwed up. Then the person who caught Torres on video, Pete Benevenia, not only issues an apology, but said that many licensing deals he received for the video, he would put toward a fund to help Torres. The lesson from this? Scoring points used to be about how you could bash and burn and troll others around you. But the greatest feeling in the world, the one we need to get back to on the web and in life, is when you bring others up who may be down. That's truly the type of internet points we want to keep scoring. You're listening to Disruptive FM with Jeffrey Cologne. Now, here comes the music. Here comes the music. It's Disruptive FM, the culture of business. I'm your host, Jeffrey Colon. In the background, that's new music from Sharam J, featuring Little Boots. It's a track called Friday City. You can connect with us on Instagram or Twitter at Disruptive FM. Connect with me personally on Instagram or Twitter at DJGEOFFE. Also, check out our latest volume triple zero mixtape on Spotify, DFM mixtape volume zero zero zero. Disruptive FM is brought to you by Microsoft and Branding Strategy Insider. For more in depth analysis, check out Microsoft.com slash stories and Branding Strategy Insider.com. Also brought to you by Iographer. Create better videos. At Iographer, they make accessories for your mobile device to help you make professional videos. Learn more about all the products we use at DFM to make our videos at Iographer.com. And next episode, we'll be giving away a few new Iographers. So make sure you tune in. And now, Disruptive FM presents... What kind of shit is that? Come on. Retail is dying. Retail is dead. Don't you know there's a retail apocalypse going on? 
Then why is retail having trouble hiring and filling positions? In recent months, as business has improved with the overall economy, many chains have concluded that they have cut too far and too much. What the what? Dick Sporting Goods and Macy's are now among the biggest retailers saying they are having trouble filling positions as they look to add staff to make the shopping experience more unique than what online retail can offer. But let's get this straight. You're trying to differentiate from the online experience. So you look to hire people to give the brick and mortar experience a human feel, but you are having trouble finding gulp humans in the first place for these jobs. If these retailers have no help, then it literally means their stores will have blown up racks, inventory all over the place and merchandise missing, which will literally then drive more people to buy online. This is a total chicken or the egg conundrum where once again, retail is going to have a hard time adapting to and ultimately possibly losing. And to that, we say, what? Come on. It's about that time to take a look at some simmering news items we have our eye on. It's a segment we call on the radar. Here's what's on our radar. What's on our radar. Number one. Spotify has announced a new beta feature that will allow independent artists to upload their music directly to the platform instead of through a label or digital aggregator. Talk about disruption. Normally, artists who aren't signed to a major label who can directly upload music to Spotify have to pay a fee to a third party service like TuneCore to upload their music to Spotify. The upload feature will be contained within the service's existing Spotify for Artists platform, which allows artists to view data about their listeners and directly submit their songs for editorial playlist consideration. The new upload feature won't work like SoundCloud, where songs can be instantly available. Instead, Spotify views it as a way for artists to have control over their own music in advance of its release date. Should Spotify eventually roll this out as a public feature, it could have a great impact on the indie music market, which has been burgeoning in the public eye, arguably since Chance the Rapper gave a huge shout out to SoundCloud at the 2017 Grammys. Number two, a majority of Americans, 59 percent, would like to see more women in political and business leadership positions. Roughly half of respondents to a new survey believe men will continue to hold the majority of those top spots in the future. Researchers also found that about half of Americans believe gender discrimination is keeping women out of leadership positions. Number three. Streaming services like Netflix are giving Hollywood and cable networks a run for their money and stealing some of their top talent, including writers, producers, and actors. The most recent high-profile departure is blackish creator Kenya Barris, poached by Netflix for $100 million. Compounding these phenomena are changing viewing habits, with more and more people cutting their cable and deciding to stay home and stream a movie rather than visiting the cinema. Hollywood should have seen this coming by analyzing the music industry. But once again, these industries don't hire intersectional thinkers. All right, that will wrap our 20th episode of DFM. Big thanks to guest Josh Hassan of Look Mister for joining us. You can connect with us by following me on Twitter or Instagram at DJ GEO FFE. Follow Disruptive FM or Twitter on Instagram at Disruptive FM. And you can read more in-depth content via our three sponsors, Microsoft.com slash stories, BrandingStrategyInsider.com, and Iographer.com. Next week, I'm joined by Greg Witt, who's going to talk about his latest book, The Gen Z Frequency, as we gear up for tons of discussion about Gen Z for Advertising Week New York, October 1st through the 4th in New York City. You can follow all that action at hashtag AWNewYork. All right, for everyone here at DFM, thanks for checking us out. We appreciate your time. I'm Jeffrey Colon, and we'll catch you next week. You've been listening to Disruptive FM with Microsoft Communications designer Jeffrey Colon. All thoughts are his own. Disruptive FM is produced in Los Angeles by Feeler Media. Love.